Mr. Cameron. Yeah. I am grateful to Madam Deputy Speaker for the opportunity to speak in this debate in the custom of my maiden speech. I pay a sincere tribute to my predecessor, Mr. Michael McCann, who worked diligently as Deputy Leader of the Council before becoming the Member of Parliament from 2010 to 2015. Prior to becoming an MP and working for the Council, Michael McCann worked as a trade union official, a task that I have also trodden in my journey to this chamber, having been a union representative in health for 14 years. I therefore wish Michael McCann well, and I am sure that from our backgrounds, we must share similar beliefs in workers' rights and representation, albeit that we come from differing political persuasions. I am extremely proud to be here too, having been elected to this constituency where I was raised, attended school, and then trained and worked in the NHS as a psychologist. My job has always been a conversation stopper. In fact, it has been known to empty rooms. <laughs> <laughs> People quieten, then back off, worrying that I am analysing them. But rest assured, I've been far too busy for that recently. I'm pleased to say, however, that all of your assessments will soon be in the post. <laughs> More seriously, though, I can attest that it is a psychological journey coming to this house for any new MP. So I wish everyone success in adapting to its landscape. There are still some days when I awaken with Paul Simon's voice ringing in my ears, how did I get here? But upon reflection, I know that I am here for three key reasons to represent the interests of my constituency, to influence those issues that I hold dear, and to give Scotland a stronger voice. Yeah. <laughs> my constituency of East Kilbride, Straven and Lesson Bay Hope is diverse, including Scotland's first new town of East Kilbride, which afforded hope and opportunities for families who moved from the city, including my own family. Known fondly as the Coleman City, Due to its keenness for building roundabouts, <laughs> and therefore being a terrifying experience for all new learner drivers, <laughs> East Kilbride um, is an amazing place to visit. It has also had many important residents over the years, including Lorraine Kelly, Julie Wilson Nimmo, Ali McCoyce, and the house's own William Fox. <laughs> We also have beautiful rural landscapes, including the market town of Straven and surrounding villages of Chapleton, Stonehouse, Old House Stanford, John Claude, Glassford and Jackson. I hope I haven't got anywhere out. <laughs> to the south, rest Blackwood, Kirkmuir Hill and Lesmahay Hope, all affording wonderful scenery alongside historic links to traditional industry or farming. <coughs> There is affluence within my constituency too in Thornton Hall, which has previously boasted the most expensive street in Scotland, and has been home to footballers and personalities. The latter include Andy Cameron, whom I used to pretend to be related to when I was at school. <laughs> Development Committee, I 
I'm delighted to be able to directly support this crucial work. In terms of issues that I hold dear, having worked as a doctor in trauma and mental health, and with patients who have learning difficulties and developmental disorders, including autism, I want to champion continued investments in these areas of health, often previously viewed as of poor relation. And having served as an expert witness in cases of trauma, I understand only too well how crucial it is that survivors of childhood abuse, rape and domestic violence have a system that meets their needs and that ensures justice prevails. Issues of institutionalised abuse must be dealt with transparently to ensure that survivors' voices are heard. As a society, we can never stand by in silence. It is true to say that so far I have had some frustrating days in this house, but I have also been heartened by small things that I did not expect. An unexpected influence has been attending prayers prior to the sitting of this house, where we are reminded daily of our responsibility to improve people's well-being. This is the litmus test of why we are here, and we must question ourselves and whether our policies improve people's lives. Yeah, yeah. I believe we are here to make a difference. Fundamentally, alongside my 55 SNP colleagues, we are also here to give Scotland a stronger voice. It is clear that change could never have come from within the system, and so change has had to be sent here by the people. So we are here to try to make a difference to people's lives, and for the devolution of powers that raise revenue, growth, jobs and productivity. Powers that also protect those most vulnerable and that deliver social justice. These ideologies can and always should in a progressive society go hand in hand. Stephen Phillips. Well, thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. And can I say what a very great honour and a privilege it is to follow the Honourable Lady after such a powerful and eloquent uh, maiden speech. I fear she's going to have to spend some of uh, uh, five years, the next five years here, teaching me how to pronounce all of the names in her constituency. Uh, she stands uh, in a long tradition in that I think it took the Honourable Member, the Member for Nehalen and Anyat, at least five years before I started to get the name of his constituency right. But I know that she will be a, a valued member of the House, not only from that contribution, but also from the fantastic work that I know she has done in her own constituency, in her profession, before she came into politics. And I really, on behalf of the whole House, would like to congratulate her on such a fantastic speech. Now, Madam De 